Hey YouTube, POD7 here once again, uh, going for the first official quote-unquote playthrough of FTL. <laughs> uh, I, I, I did the quotation fingers just to let you know. There's no face cam, there will never be a face cam probably. <laughs> uh, yeah, new playthrough, new desktop wallpaper. Um, let's do it. Let's see if we can... Make it all the way to the end this time. This is going to be a more of a serious attempt. <laughs> uh, I've got kind of a definite plan for this series. I don't. I really don't want to call it a let's play because I, I came in probably second phase of popularity with let's plays, and at that time there was a lot of expectations and. It seemed like there was an unwritten code, and so that's stuck in my head for some reason. But, um, yeah. We're going to go ahead and go with the NG ship for this run. I just think it's cooler, and um, the, I had the best luck with it so far anyway. <laughs> so, um, our theme here... It's going to be the Borg from Star Trek The Next Generation, and uh, that that is a hint of things to come for this series. Uh, this one... No, that's alright. Yeah, there we go. Look, you <laughs> two NGs and one human is what you start off with the crew, and you have a... Ion Blaster, which does zero hull damage, but it will take systems offline for a certain amount of time. And then we have an anti-ship drone, which is the little fly guys that fly around and shoot the enemy's ship uh, at random, basically. <laughs> you don't get to tell them what to do or uh, set any settings for them other than upgrading their systems. So here we go. The Borg ship, we got Locutus on the pilot seat, I believe. I think I'm supposed to be... I, this is all pre-recorded once again. Um, I, it just felt better that way. Um, I was supposed to be reading that to you, I believe. But <laughs> um, obviously that didn't happen. This is a take two, by the way. <laughs> Uh, I tried to record in my kitchen, and it it was really awesome. I had a lot of good energy and charisma, and then I listened back to it, and there's just this loud humming noise in the background. It was so weird. Uh, anyway, we got it, it turned out to be my fridge, so let's get this run going. We got seven of nine on weapons and Hugh on. Uh, on engines and then Locutus obviously as a pilot. So we're taking on these pirates. Um, we'll demonstrate. Well, my my strategy with this ship is to go ion blaster at the shields, and then obviously let the uh, anti ship drone do its work, and then just make sure to have all my crew ready to go in case something gets hurt. So yeah, we've got a Borg crew. Um, if you've never... A lot of people have probably that'll watch this have probably seen Star Trek. But for anyone who has not seen Star Trek The, ne the Next Generation and you're interested in movies and film like I am, I would consider all seven seasons of Star Trek The Next Generation as required viewing. If you want to be a student of production and and writing and just overall television making I mean there's just it did everything you possibly could in a series and it was all under the guise of a sci-fi adventure show so um, that would be a Zoltan type cruiser anytime you see purple paint on the outside of a ship that means it's a pirate um, I don't know if I've ever mentioned that or not before, but, um, yeah, I want to, 
while I'm getting slightly owned here. <laughs> oh, they're, they're powering up their FTL. That means uh, you want to attack either their pilot seat or their engines, and sometimes both. I, I figured that they were one hit away from death anyway, so might as well just not bother. So... Anyway, next generation. Uh, 7 of 9 is actually from Voyager, but if you if you like, if you can get Star Trek The Next Generation on Netflix or through the magic of the internet, <laughs> uh, I highly recommend it. And if you end up liking it and loving it as much as I do, uh, getting into Deep Space Nine and Voyager, well, it takes nothing at all. I mean... They do kind of go in different directions as Next Generation, but the lore is familiar enough, and <laughs> no pun intended for all my Next Generation friends out there. Uh, <laughs> the lore is, is familiar enough, and the storytelling is almost up to par. Um, the acting... Is definitely up to par, uh, especially Avery Brooks as Captain Sisko and Catherine Mulgrew as Janeway, obviously. But and uh, yeah, I just decided the Borg would be good for this because the NG. If you read their uh, their description, it says nobody's quite sure if they're uh, organic or completely mechanical and that's kind of the theme with the Borgs. Are they still people or are they just to be considered machines and dealt with accordingly? So yeah, I thought that fit the NG crew pretty nicely and seven of nine um I don't want to well I guess it's not really that big of a spoiler, but she's a Borg who is taken aboard the crew of the Voyager and uh, she's rehabilitated uh, back in mostly into her normal original human self from when she was a kid. And through her, they experience what it's like to they figure out what it what it takes to get someone back from the Borg, as well as uh, finding out different kinds of things about Borg society and that they actually have a society. So if you're in, if you like the idea of the Borg, uh, Voyager is definitely a decent show to watch because they run into them all the time, <laughs> like literally all the time. <laughs> but um, yeah, we <laughs> Magmar. We picked up an NG named Mag. Who's that Pokemon? It's it's Magmar. And let's get this, the music turned on, shall we? Yeah, so... Uh, let me try to think. As far as making this a series goes, I recorded an hour and 12 minutes, I think, in one file. And uh, I decided I'm going to cut it off uh, every 20 or so minutes. So that'll be three four maybe episodes um uh i might make the last one extra long we'll see but uh yeah i don't want to talk for an hour and a half straight and i don't want you guys to have to listen to me drone on for an hour and a half so um it, that's that's pretty much what it's about i mean if you guys want me to do 30 40 minute episodes i can but, uh, you know, I just thought we'd try it out for this, for this run and we can fix things up from there. I didn't know if I wanted to do a, uh, an intro for this series or not. I'm working on a channel intro right now featuring videos from my past, or clips of videos from my past on YouTube, so we'll see what happens. Um, I don't have my drone up in this fight because the meteors will do all the work for me. 
So I just make sure to uh, go back and forth between shield and weapons with my ion blaster. So that they're pretty much incapacitated. So that saved me a drone part, and every time you you uh, turn a drone on, you exp you spend a drone part, and once you've done that, you can't get it back unless you have a drone recovery arm. So, and uh, here comes the first bit of luck in this run for sure. Uh, decided to sell the defense drone because. Uh, with this idea, I shouldn't need it. So having two ion blasters is incredibly fortunate for this ship because that means I can hit shields and weapons at the same time with ion blasts. So they're defenseless and they're weaponless and my weapon drone can just go buck wild on them. Which is a phrase I have not said in probably seven years and it feels incredibly wrong. I'm an old man in my head. For anyone wondering, I'm 25 going on 50, basically. 25 years old physically, but being raised by uh, parents who are four decades older than I am, and having cousins who are two decades older than I am. I guess mentally, I grew up in their time, but also being mildly uh, aware <laughs> that I lived in the 90s. So, I'm an old soul, is what they used to call it. Um, yeah, they've got one of their own little fly guys there. Uh, you definitely, in my opinion, you definitely want to get your shields up majorly first, unless you get lucky like I did, getting the ion blast second ion blaster. Or if you get another drone that works for the way you play. Um, because those NG, the NG have lower health than every other crew member. So uh, any sort of damage at all is a complete disaster uh, for your NG crew. Because even just repairing a, a hull rupture... They have less health, and so when they start suffocating, it goes... They have less time than a normal crew. And look at that, we're already in our, our second sector. Or we're getting close. Getting to the exit. The iMovie preview is about... Two by three and a half inches, maybe? A screen that big? So I'm, I definitely can't read half of this stuff to you. <laughs> um... But yeah, um, this is actually a pretty good map that I got. Um, I think I decided to risk it. I'm not sure, but I did have a choice between plenty of red and plenty of green. Um, I don't think I've ever come up with a sector map that had almost all nebulas down the line, and I think that's probably part of the code, but. Who knows? <laughs> I mean, it seems like most of the game is randomly generated. Oh, this is a Mantis ship, and they're huge douchebags <laughs> most of the time. Luckily, this one doesn't have a uh, boarding system, so we're pretty much in the clear right now. Yep, okay. <laughs> There you go, I'm, I'm hitting shields and weapons at the same time. The uh, the Ion Blaster I picked up at the store is a Mach 1, or Make 1, whatever you want to call it. And that may, that means it's just a little bit slower and it's uh, probably has less chance of, of hitting and stuff like that. So it's a bit slower, but um, as long as you have... Oh, we got a new crew. And it's another injury. Fen... You got Mag Magmar and Finn and Finn. Finn? <laughs> it's definitely not a human. Uh, and I don't think we'll be picking up Jake anytime soon. Um, I really shouldn't reference that show. <laughs> I think I've watched maybe like five whole episodes of it. So 
I always tune in and there's like 30 minutes or 30 seconds left in the episode. And then they start showing Johnny Test or something equally as horrible. Oh, that's the uh, uh, default augmentation you get with the NG ship. Basically, if you didn't pause and read, which I highly recommend, especially if you're not watching on full screen, which, why? Why, <laughs> why wouldn't you be? But, uh, basically, if you have power to your med bay, uh, your crew can be healed no matter where they are on the ship at the price of it being a slower process. So that comes in handy whenever you have a boarding crew uh, because the usual tactic if you don't have that is, or something like it, is to try to lure the boarders into your med bay and then you can fight them in the med bay uh, and so you're healing while you're also being damaged, so it kind of evens out, and so you can just fight away. But, uh, for the NG ship, uh, what I mostly do is send them around to areas that are in need of repair, because they have double repair speed. And if there are borders in the way, I'll open the doors that will... Uh, suck oxygen out of the room, and then once the borders go to a different room, I shut out the door to the to the damage system and send an NG in there. Oh, we just lost somebody. Who did we lose? We lost Fen to giant alien spiders, I believe. And that sucks because. Well, I don't want to spoil. <laughs> I won't spoil the entire freaking series. Can you tell it's my it's my first time finishing a? Uh... Oh damn! I... <laughs> Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. I finished the run. I'm not going to say whether I won or not because honestly, it was a, a total heartbreak. But. <laughs> Yeah, if I hadn't lost Fen, I would have gotten an achievement by the end. Just saying. Um, decided to buy a bunch of fuel. There's an, an Ion Blast 2 there, but it would have... The Ion Blast 2 takes 3 power to run, and so I would have been having 6 power into weapons. And uh, I just I couldn't accept that at this point in the game. Uh, the run's going pretty, uh, pedestrian. I don't know if that's the right word, but, uh, pretty average run at the moment. Uh, this is, these are the bad scouts. Scouts with shields and three to four weapons are usually things you don't want to mess around with. Um, since I have the two ion blasts, I felt comfortable with taking it on, but... Uh, if you ever ran into one of these in the first sector, you would want to jump to the next uh, spot as fast as you possibly could. Unless it says something like, uh, if you let it get away, it'll tell the Rebel Fleet where you are. Because that means the, uh, the Rebel Fleet moves faster across the map. The sector map, so... Definitely want to take those guys out. But, picked up some kind of uh, missile... Hermes missile, maybe? Yeah. Uh, the missiles are pretty useless with this ship, because you already have your drone and your ion blast. Um, at least in my opinion, missiles go through shields, but at the same time, they miss pretty often, more often than not, in my opinion, and in my experience, actually. Um, so... Uh, for the Kestrel, missiles are a must, but for the NG ship, you're pretty okay if you don't use them. And every once in a while, you'll run into a Mantis ship. <laughs> every once in a while, you'll run into a event, an event where uh, they'll ask you to sell your missiles for scrap. And one time, I had like 36 missiles stockpiled, and so I was able to get the full... Uh, 
the highest amount they were offering, and that saved me for two or three sectors having that scrap, so. Um, yeah, not a boarding Mantis ship again, so pretty lucky there. I believe we're winding down to the end of this episode. Got about five minutes in. Five minutes left, excuse me, so. Um, yeah, two sectors seems to be a pretty good episode length, usually, uh, from all the other guys that I watch. Uh, they tend to go two to three sectors, but for my first time through, I figured two sectors was probably good enough. Um, any background noise, again, once again, in case you haven't watched my screen test videos for this game, uh, any background noise is because I live on the corner of two streets, and my room has two windows on either side of me, basically, one behind me and one to my right. And that's parallel with each street. So I'm getting tons and tons and tons of traffic noise. Um, luckily, it's pretty cool today, so I don't have my fan on. That would really be horrible <laughs> for this. Um, I think I'm trying... Yeah, I was, I was trying to decide what to do there. Um... I decided to be a little bit riskier in this run. If I hadn't got that second Iron Blast, there's no way I would have done that. I would have just gone straight to the exit because even if you get the warning field over the exit, you start fighting the Big Daddy Rebel ships. <laughs> and uh, they are a pain in the ass, for sure. So, fighting another Zoltan ship, that green field around it is their special ability, quote-unquote. And, uh... Basically, it's just an added shield uh, that they get, and the Ion Blast won't affect any systems. They'll just hit the shield and uh, knock some of its health bar, or whatever you want to call it, down. Uh, we've got them pretty much wrapped up here. They're still hitting us, though. we got a fire in the pilot, or the bridge, if you want to call it that. Sent Magmar over to... Uh, repair repair the oxygen and I'm sending Hugh over to help the pilot because uh, when your piloting is knocked out your evasion just shoots down and the same with your engines if you have engines and pilot down uh, you're dead in the water pretty much unless you have NG crew because they repair really fast and you need it in that case for sure no matter what system they're uh, manning so yep just uh healing uh locutus up there i i recorded this like three days ago and i already forgot most of it <laughs> but uh i remembered magmar and uh my weapon situation because it was completely unreal how lucky i got in this run but um yeah, 20-25 uh, minute episodes, maybe a really long third episode, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to try to get them up every other day because that allows for um, editing and stuff, and then rendering to HD, and then uploading. Uh, let me know if there's anything I need to do for you guys, or for me, uh, anything you'd like to see. Um... I'll probably try to do one for every ship that I unlock, uh, <laughs> which means it could be a long time uh, in between in between runs sometimes. But uh, yeah, uh, I'm hoping to do that because this is a fairly low maintenance, low maintenance, uh, low effort, <laughs> a very low effort series to produce. So uh, we'll see. What happens, I mean, uh, video three of the screen test went from three views one day to 300 the next. So, there's people out there watching, and uh, hopefully they have an opinion. This is POD7 signing out.
for this episode. See you in the next one. Where we go to Sector 3. And I signed off way too early. Awkward! Um, yeah. We'll see you next time, folks. In the rock-controlled sector. Andy Homo. Thank you.